Yo. What's up? What is up, you guys, and welcome back to another episode of Natural Hair and True Crime. If you guys are new to my channel, welcome. My name is Jatea. Here on my channel, I give you guys natural hair content. I do wig reviews and I also discuss true crime cases while doing my natural hair. If you guys are interested in any of those that I just listed, I do recommend that you go ahead and hit that subscribe button as well as the notification bell. That way you can always be in the know when I am posting a new video. Now y'all, first of all, I just wanted to let you guys know that I really love y'all and I appreciate you guys so much. Currently, I am at what, 361 subscribers <clears throat> and i just want to say i have even just for me not posting consistently and i'm just now getting back into my videos y'all still been fucking with me and for that i really appreciate y'all so moving forward with the natural hair and true crime videos i do want to implement well just a quick fun fact for you guys who don't know i am from arkansas i currently reside in arkansas been just born and raised here and I decided, and I'm just now realizing it's quite a few true crime cases, like bizarre ones that have happened in Arkansas. So I feel like at least once out the month, I will be dedicating a natural hair true crime episode to a case that's based here right in Arkansas. With that being said, today's case is actually based in Arkansas and... Christina Marie Riggs. Some of y'all have heard of this case. Some of y'all haven't. If not, y'all might want to listen today because, yeah. And what I will tell you is she was actually the first woman to be executed in Arkansas since the 1800s. So if you are interested and want to know what she did to become the first woman to be executed in Arkansas six, since the 1800s, then go ahead and stay tuned. No, but for real guys, if y'all really are interested in knowing about this case, and even if y'all want to kind of just brush your memory, if you, you've heard about this case and want to know like some of the details, because I don't go into all of them, because we'll be here forever, then go ahead and make sure y'all stay tuned. But yeah, I'm going to stop rambling. I'm going to go ahead and get into it. And yeah. Okay, y'all, so as you can see, my hair is in mini twists, and I'm actually gonna go ahead and refresh my hair. So what I like to do, I try to at least do this either every day or every other day, just depending on how dry my hair feels. I spray leave-in conditioner on, then I apply either like a grease or um, a shea butter, something moisturizing or something that locks in the moisture, like a carrier oil or something like that. And then I also take some oil and I apply it to my scalp and do a scalp massage. So that's what I will be doing today. The leave-in conditioner, y'all seen I probably used this in my previous video. Um, it was the Design Essentials, like avocado and, I think it was avocado and something. It was some y'all, but yeah. Um, in all honesty, I really don't care for it, but however, since I done bought it, I'm gonna just go ahead and use it up. I don't know if it's because I'm mixing it with water instead of using it as just the product, but uh, I don't know. I, I don't really care for it, but like I say, I'm gonna go and use it up since I done spent my damn coins on it. But yeah, I also will be using the Alakay Natural Shea Yo Yogurt Hair Moisturizer. Yeah, I ain't gonna lie, this, this is my first time using it, and it did pretty good for my twist. However, it's not which I guess I wasn't expecting it to. It it was good as far as I, moisturizing and kind of locking in moisture. However, my hair still kind of got a little frizzy, which I was kind of hoping this would help with. But it still did its job as far as moisturizing. And I will also be using the Mayo's Rosemary, Rose, yeah, Rosemary Mint Scalp and Hair Strengthening Oil. I'll be using this to apply to my scalp. But yeah, those are the three products that I'll be using today. And yeah, well, let's go ahead and get right into it. Okay, you guys, so today's case is taking place in the location of Sherwood, Arkansas. We're going to go ahead and be discussing the case of Christina Marie Riggs. Christina was born September 2nd of 1971 in Lawton, Oklahoma. And 
yeah, I'm gonna kind of skip forward because I don't, it's not a lot of information on like her beginning, like her from her born to a certain age. So I'm gonna just fast forward into when she was around the age of seven. Now, according to Christina, uh, between the ages of seven and 13, she was sexually abused by her stepbrother as well as a neighbor. And it doesn't go into great detail about that, but that is what she claims. Now, by the time Christina was age 14, it was stated she was already getting into mischievous behavior. So she began to start smoking cigarettes, drinking, and you know, smoking the occasional marijuana. Now, I don't know if Christina was like this from like being born or from jump. At an early age, Christina suffered from depression and also insecurities due to her being overweight. Now, I don't know how much she weighed as when she was a kid, but I know, I wanna say that they said she would weigh like 280 pounds. I mean, you can see she she's a hefty woman, okay? But yeah, I mean, I'm assuming just from a young age, she was always kind of like on the bigger side. Nonetheless, this caused her to be insecure. And because of her weight, she was very self-conscious and she believed that she was unable to get boyfriends and talk to guys unless she used her body to get them in. You pretty much can say she started becoming sexually active at a very early age. Now, this of course could stem already from she claiming her stepbrother sexually abusing her. Now, following this, Christina eventually ended up becoming pregnant in 1988. She, I wanna say she had a boy and she ended up giving the child up for adoption. Now, after high school, Christina went on to become a licensed practical nurse and she ended up getting jobs at hospitals in Oklahoma. Now, fasting forward to 1991, so she's a registered nurse. She actually ends up becoming pregnant again in 1991. And this time she decides to keep her child. And I want to say, yeah, she had another boy. And y'all, and this is kind of like effed up part. So she told the baby's father and yeah, so pretty much he got ghosts. Um, as soon as she told him, he left like literally like he dipped and then christina was left with unfortunately having to take care of the child by herself now a after this i want to say she ended up rekindling with an old boy from previously and actually things ended up going good with this boyfriend they ended up moving in together or i want to say he moved in with her and soon after that in july of 1993 i want to say they ended up getting married oh by the way i'm sorry y'all his name was john riggs i can't uh, find anywhere where I think her maiden name was because I mean of course her name is Christina Marie Riggs so of course I'm assuming because she was married to him and she took on his last name ever unless I just happened to like look over somewhere I don't know what her maiden name was but yeah so they ended up they were married now things were going good in the beginning however eventually things kind of started to sour between the two and the relationship ended up just being unsuccessful. Now with this, um, this caused Christina's depression to come back. And by the way, I don't know if, I'm sorry, if I didn't mention before, Christina, she had depression as well as insecurities, like I said, but she also was having suicidal thoughts. I couldn't remember if I had told y'all in the beginning. So I just wanted to reiterate that. But yeah, so with this failing marriage, this caused her to kind of go back into that depression state and she was having suicidal thoughts. Now, during their failed marriage, Christina ended up expecting a child. However, unfortunately, she did miscarriage. But I wanna say a few years later, they ended up expecting again. And this time, the she did have the baby full term. And this time, she ended up having a girl, girl and she named her Shelby Riggs. So now, Christina has two children. And I want to say around in the summer of 1995, because it was kind of difficult, like I say, even though she did have this second child, the marriage still was kind of like crumbling. So, and Christina really needed help taking care of the children. During this time, they were living in Oklahoma. Christina, now I don't know if it was both her and her husband or just her. She ended up moving to Sherwood, Arkansas where her mother lived, and I'm assuming her biological mother. She made this move and she made this decision hoping that her mother would be able to kind of help with the children. As soon as she made this move, Christina and John 
de separated, but they were still married, I want to say. They were just separated. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm going to pause real quick. So some of my mini twists is kind of like loose, especially in the back. So I'm probably going to try to retwist those up. Uh, I plan on probably wearing these for a few more days, and then I'm taking them out and probably either putting some more mini twists in or doing a braid out of something. But, yeah, just wanted to let y'all know. But, yeah, so now Sherry is... Sherry, what the hell? What am I thinking? Christina. <coughs> Jesus. It's been a long night already, I guess. So now Christina has moved to share with Arkansas. And now she's pretty much a single mother. Now, I mean, like I said, her mother is helping her a little bit. However, I mean, her mother works as well. So I'm pretty sure she's not able to keep them or help as much. According to Christina, with all of this, I mean, she moves to Arkansas. She's now a single mother of two. I want to say her mother ended up getting her own at hospital. Now, y'all, I read somewhere she worked at Arkansas Heart Hospital, and then it, and then I also read somewhere it was another hospital. I'll of course link the sources so you can reread for yourself. She ended up getting a job, but however, fortunately, even with the luck of getting on at the hospital, I mean. Just with two kids and bills piling up, Christina did struggle financially. And y'all, this just, of course, didn't help with the already mental state that she had. So yeah, kind of like what Christina said. I mean, she was just a one income home and between paying bills and trying to feed and take care of two kids. I mean, it just wasn't enough. However, of course, later on, now this is according to Christina. Now, she also stated that she was getting child support. However, it was not consistent, I'm assuming. Um, she said it was kind of like here and there type of thing, but definitely not consistent. Definitely nothing that was stable enough to make sure she was secure and helping with the kids. So, now this is according to Christina. However, later on, it was stated that the well according to the baby daddies they were paying child support on time so i mean i don't know who who's lying but yeah all right y'all so basically just go, doing an overview right of course christina basically i mean and i can understand well i'm not gonna say i understand i don't have um children however i mean i know and i witnessed how difficult it can be for a single mother, especially, I mean, just with one child, it can be difficult, but let alone, you know, two. So, Christina, like I said before, she, her mental state was not all that great to begin with. So now with this stress of having to work, take care of kids, and making sure the bills paid, and of course, it was just one thing after the other, I want to say, she wasn't able to pay her car insurance, and other bills just kept piling up and kept piling up, and it's just like she... It just seemed like she was not able to catch up. Eventually, the suicidal thoughts did come back. And Christina, Jesus, for some reason thought, I mean, she honestly, she didn't know anything else to do but to commit suicide. But however, instead of just deciding to take her own life, she thought it would be better to take her children's lives as well. Because she felt like, for one, she said she didn't want to, their children to know that she committed suicide. And two, she didn't want her children to be separated because they had two different fathers. And she didn't want them to be separated when she, you know, committed suicide. I mean, pretty much she just thought it would be better if she killed all of them. Like, take out her children and then herself. So, that was the plan. And I guess, unfortunately... No one could really talk her out of it or really knew what she was going through. So I don't think, I mean, it doesn't say she really had any friends that were kind of there for her. I mean, her mother tries to help her as best as she could. However, I don't think she had maybe that relationship with her enough to kind of explain really how she felt and what she was going through. But yeah, eventually these suicidal thoughts they did take over. And now, I mean leading to these events that transpired on November 4th of 1997. Yeah, I'm gonna just go ahead and get into this. I know I put a warning, of course, always at the beginning of the video, but I do wanna just state it again. 
I mean, this is it's just a, a crazy and a very, very tragic case all around. I can understand if you do, don't want to listen to it because, I mean, it, it's pretty intense. I always say, I mean, I mean, I've mean, read about, watched a lot of crazy cases. However, I mean, this one is just one of those that are just really disturbing. But yeah, we're just going to go ahead and get into it. Okay, y'all. So I didn't mention before, Christina, she was, I'm assuming throughout her life, she was going maybe to a counselor because she was prescribed antidepressants and stuff like that. During this time, she was prescribed a specific, a specific antidepressant. Now, y'all, I don't know if I'm pronouncing this right. I was intending to Google it to make sure I was saying the correct pr pronunciation. But she was prescribed at the time Elavil. Hope I'm saying it right. If not, y'all yeah, know. Y'all yeah, can correct me in the comments. But yeah, so she was taking this uh, medication called Elavil. So she ended up getting this from her pharmacist because like I said, she was prescribed to it. Now where she worked, she ended up getting potassium chloride. That's what it is. Now y'all, if y'all are unfamiliar with this, it's pretty much... Yeah, they use it in hospitals. However, like I'm, I'm assuming like really, really small doses. But it's also what they use when they're administering a lethal injection to an inmate on death row, you know, doing an execution. So, yeah, yeah, I probably already know where I'm gonna go with this. But yeah, so she ended up stealing those from where she worked, as well as some syringes and stuff like that. So I, I'm so I think. She probably did all this on November 4th, like before she got off work. So now as they got home, pretty much her plan was to murder her children and commit suicide. What she did, she ended up giving both Shelby and Justin, and by the way, I'm sorry y'all, um, Justin I wanna say at the time is five years old and Shelby is two. So, yeah, these are, like, toddler babies, okay? So, she ends up giving Justin and Shelby the Elevil mixed with water. She made them drink it, and this was basically to put them to sleep. So, once they fell asleep, she put them in their beds. Now, I want to say around 10 p.m., it was stated, Christina went up to her son and injected him with undiluted potassium chloride. Now... <laughs> Yeah, I'm going to pause right here to kind of explain a little bit more about potassium chloride. And like I said, it's basically one of the concoctions they use or like one of the dosages they use in an inmate's, like when they're executing an inmate with a lethal injection. Well, I know in Arkansas, of course, we do the death penalty and lethal injection is how we do the execution. Now, in this process, I want to say they still do it like this. It's like three doses or three drugs or whatever that they give you in this injection, right? So, and don't quote me, I don't know the exact names of all of them, but like I say, it's basically three steps, three shots. On the first dose, they basically, they give you like a, a dosage of this drug and it basically sedates you and puts you to sleep. Now, after that, the second thing they shoot you with, uh, I think it's called bromide. Or some y'all don't quote me like I say I don't know the exact names of each of these but that now this one is this basically a step to paralyze you y'all basically these two steps is to have the have the inmate comfortable and like for them to not suffer last one is potassium chloride now potassium chloride is basically the drug what they say it um basically uh, causes your organs your body to kind of convulse it eventually goes to your heart. It causes your heart to beat irregularly. And then eventually your heart stops. So pretty much that the drug is to like the last thing, last thing in the step. Going back to potassium chloride. So she gave her child undiluted potassium chloride. Giving a person just straight undiluted potassium chloride, it you might it it's very painful. Where I looked up, it said that basically it's like liquid fire going throughout your veins. And you can feel it like going up to your heart. Now that's just, you know, if you don't dilute it, like just straight shooting somebody with it. So mind you, like I said, when they do this three-step process for the lethal injection, the first two steps are basically to make sure the person is unconscious and can't feel anything for that last step, which is the pain, which stops, you know, the heart. 
So she gives her child undiluted potassium chloride after, I mean, I, my, like I said, keep in mind, she gave her child the Evalil, whatever you call the drug, antidepressant that makes you fall asleep. But even then, she gave him a, a small dosage. So after she gives him the potassium chloride, like I say, of course, it is like a liquid fire. So he immediately like woke up in just agony, screaming and crying. And y'all, when I tell you this is just, I mean, it's really sad as heck. And it's just, it really pisses me off, man. But yeah, so once she realizes that, I mean, her son is suffering, she then begins to try to give him morphine to try to put him to sleep. However, I mean, at this point, it's obviously not going to work because, or at least not work as quickly as you want it to because at this point, I mean, he's already in a panic state. His adrenaline is pumping. I mean, it's probably going to take a minute. Like, I'm not no scientist. I don't know exactly how all of the drugs work, but I'm assuming, especially when it comes to adrenaline, adrenaline and your heart is already racing and you're in a panic, you're in pain, it's going to be a minute, especially that extreme of a pain, it's going to be a minute before that morphine takes effect. It didn't instantly, instantly knock him out. And so Christina just decided she didn't want her son to suffer any more than he already has. And she takes a pillow and begins to smother him to death. <sighs> Jesus. So after she finished murder her child, she then moves on to her two year old daughter, Shelby. And y'all, oh, Jesus Christ. So she decided once she, I guess, realized how the chloride did her son and how much pain and, and agony he was in. So she just decided to skip that part all together. And she just ended up smothering her daughter to, with the pillow. After she unalived her kids, she then placed their bodies on her bed and covered them up, I want to say, with a blanket or a sheet. And then after that, she wrote, a, I want to say, a suicide note to her mother, basically explaining her reasoning for doing this and how she feel like, I mean, this is the only option. And she wanted to take her children with her because she didn't want them to, like I said before, you know, be separated and know that her that their mother committed suicide. So after she wrote this suicide note, she then took 28 Elevils, Elevils, however you say that, y'all. She took 28, which was said, of course, to be a lethal amount. And y'all, I'm kind of, I'm just like, it's actually crazy, but... So she took 20, 28 of those and then from the sources, it says that she injected enough potassium chloride in her to kill five people. Now y'all, I don't know how in the world she survived, but she survived. And like, I'm going back to, I don't know if it had anything to do with her weight, but after all of that, taking all of that, she survived. Now, mind you, I read somewhere where it says she had a big hole from, I guess, the um, potassium chloride, I guess, eating its way out of her. Yeah, I don't know. It's just one of those instances, like, where it's like, I don't know. God said, no, not, no, you're gonna, you're gonna pay. Like, you're gonna suffer. You're not going out there easy. <sighs> Ooh, when I tell you, I can't wait to go off at the end of this. But, yes, yeah, so after... All of that happened. The next day, she was supposed to go to work. Now, after her mother realized that she wasn't at work, she ended up trying to call her, and then she didn't get an answer. She ended up just going to her house to kind of do a welfare check. And then as she arrived, she witnessed, and she saw that her grandchildren and her daughter, she assumed at the time, were all dead. So she called 911, an ambulance, the police, I'm assuming they came out and they realized that Christina was still alive. So they took her to, I want to say, Baptist North Little Rock, took her there. And while she was there, they went back to investigate. And that's where they found the suicide note. So they already knew that this was a murder slash suicide attempt. So after that, she was moved to the, I think, oh, oh, what is the unit called? The intensive care unit. 
and basically under supervi supervision. Yeah, once she was out of the hospital, they recorded she had an eight minute confession of literally what Olive just told you and how she done it and her plans and her reason why. Oh, Jesus. So she was, of course, charged. Now, let's just go ahead and y'all, I'm going to get into this trial. Christina's lawyer are pretty much kind of trying to plead with the jury of how she's, oh, she was just depressed. She's just had a very rough life. And all this crap. Oh, I'm sorry. Y'all, let me backtrack. So when she was arrested, she basically, she pled to not guilty due to pretty much insanity, mental illness mental disease, etc. One of her what arguments was that while she was in Oklahoma, because like I said, she worked at one of the hospitals. Well, the, if I don't know if y'all are familiar with the, the bombing in Oklahoma in 1995, well, she claimed that she was helping with the bombing victims and she ended up getting post-traumatic stress disorder from helping with the victims. Well, come to find out, there's actually no record I mean, it. yeah, she worked, I'm assuming, at the hospital. However, the day of the bombing, she didn't work. And then even when she was back on duty, she wasn't assigned to the bombing units. So she, there is no record of her even being helping with the bombings. But she claimed that was one of the things that caused PTSD, caused depression and suicidal thoughts. But yeah, so basically they was making an argument that, I mean, she's, just from an early age, she had depression. Um, she was just already, she was overweight, so she had insecurity issues. She was sexually abused by her stepbrother and this neighbor, and it just caused a lot of just PTSD. Which, and I'm not saying that all of these things are, aren't true, and this could, could have very well affected her mental state. I mean, but however, this, I mean, it's just some things just, unexcusable you just gotta suck it up buttercup you feel me but no but yeah and uh, but plus also you know just having to take on being a single mother taking on two kids and like i said before i mean according to the baby daddies they was doing their part but according to her it i mean it was like ever so often so the defendant was going against christina yeah, he, he wasn't going. He wasn't buying none of what they was talking about or none of what they was trying to convince the jury of, like, this mental state. And he, they was like, yeah, he's not buying it. And I want to say, uh, I'm sorry, I'm looking at my notes. His name was Larry Jigley, and he uh, he was the Pulaski County Prosecutor. Yeah, and these are his exact words. He said that she's a self-centered, selfish, premeditated killer who did the unspeakable act of taking her own children's lives and i could not agree more with that also she did see a psychiatrist the psychiatrist deemed her as being men legitly mentally ill and she thought there was literally no other option and she was just doing what she thought was best for her and her children whereas versus on the other side like i said he ain't going he ain't going for nothing she's talking about and he's pretty much telling like the jury i mean she, she's a cold-hearted killer she's selfish self-centered so the jury ended up delegating and although she pled like i said not guilty due to insanity etc they did find her guilty and she was charged with two counts of first degree murder so now i want to say they said after this she kind of passed out but i mean what the, what the fucking do but yeah so after hearing this i guess christina was like I if it she was she didn't want to spend the rest of her life in jail. So she told the jury, the jurors, she wanted to die. Like she wanted to be given the death penalty. She did not I mean she wanted to be punished and she didn't want to live. They did give her what she wanted and she was sentenced to death by lethal injection. I apologize, y'all. I'm not giving y'all the dates. But this all happened on June 30th of 1988. Not 1988, Jesus. 1998. Lord. And like I said, she was sentenced to death by lethal injection. So going forward, moving on to the execution. So fasting forward to May 2nd of 2000, which I want to say was on a Tuesday. 
between the hours of 8 to 9 p.m. They began the process of the execution. Now, I want to say they said it was delayed like 18 minutes due to them not being able to find a vein. But eventually, of course, they found one and proceeded with the injection. Now, this happened at the Cummins Correction Facility, which is out, outside of Pine Bluff, Arkansas. They started the process and it went smoothly after that and she was pronounced deceased nine minutes later. If y'all want to know her last words, like I say, I'll make sure to list all my sources down below and you can read it there. I just don't care to really go into um, what her last words were. But yeah, y'all, let me just get into my, my thoughts and freaking opinions. Because look, First of all, I don't think, let me just, I, so first it was kind of like a little debate on was Christina, like, was she like really legit mentally ill and she really thought that this was the best way out for her and her kids or was she really legit just like self-centered and didn't care? Honestly, I feel like it was a little bit of both because I, Mind you, in my opinion, suicidal has got to be one of the most selfish things to do. However, it's like you you just got to be a sick individual, like to decide the fate of your kids and decide to take them out this world. Like you literally could have gave them up for, I mean, adoption. You could have requested family members. I mean, if that was the case and if you didn't want them to be separated, which I don't know. You could very I mean, you could have gave them to your mom. If that had been the case, you literally could have just gave those children to your mama or somebody who's willing. But you, because you didn't want them to be separated, you decided to just take them out. So I don't very well doubt that Christina had mental issues. I don't doubt it. However, I mean, that's not it. That is not an excuse for her killing her children. Like even with the psychi psychiatric evaluation, they deemed her as sane. Like she knew what she was doing. Like to the thought, I mean, like even whatever your, whatever your reasoning was, what you thought, you literally planned this out from getting the antidepressant morphine, getting the potassium chloride to take out your children y'all when i say the that has got to be the most like crazy way and i really I, i'm just kind of confused on why she why potassium chloride that baby like suffered okay and y'all that honestly that pisses me off that that child suffered I honestly, in my opinion, I feel like she shouldn't have. Hmm. I don't know. It's just kind of crazy because, like, the first thing we say when, you know, somebody kills somebody, like serial killers or just somebody kills somebody in general, like, oh, they need the death penalty, you know, depending on the circumstance. But in a case where they want it, I don't think she should have got it because, I mean, it was too easy. And it's not like, no, you need to pay for your consequences. Now, mind you, I know when you sit on death row, it'd be years, but even then, like, you didn't even give those children an opportunity to grow up. And I don't know, y'all, that's it's just really sad and really heartbreaking. And to think, like, you went as far as to, and they say, like, lethal injection is one of the, like, the most inhum inhumane ways to die. And you decide to do your kids have your kids because i mean that's pretty much what you were doing you were give, giving them a lethal injection and from you being um, a nurse i would assume you would have understood a little bit more and i'm assuming you would have researched this a little bit more or you just maybe thought oh i know potassium chloride is going to end it but not realizing you trying to take your children out this world for them to not suffer you literally had them suffer or had your son suffer yeah, I just want to say this. I mean, if you are a parent, and usually majority of parents, I mean, if you're having suicidal thoughts, I always, always 
say please seek help i mean get the the hotline i mean i can list them down in my description box please but i promise you it is not like your kids need you and they don't need you to harm them and hurt them you feel what i'm saying and i'm not trying to down talk on mental health i completely understand mental health affects people differently however i mean what she was stating and like what the prosecutor said i mean welcome to america it's a lot of people who have endured worse or going through worse i mean okay you're obese and you're insecure you you're a single mom with two kids like it's single moms out here with more kids than that but they making it happen and they first thought it's not to give up or think they need to be taken out this world and they need to take their kids with them like no i did i feel like this i mean it had to be more it just had to be mental illness because i don't see no i mean she was same but at the same time she wasn't same because i don't see no l l same person doing this and all honesty in my opinion if you so she's had suicidal thoughts before she's been on depression. So she was on depressants at the time, antidepressants at the time. Why do, why do they be having them people work in medical fields? Like if you are known to have a mental illness that's severe, like, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe it just, she didn't show it, but like, <sighs> I feel like if a person is really taking medications like that, especially anti like real tough like that, you don't need to be working in the medical medical field where you have easy access to substances and drugs like those. Like, cause come on, like no, nah, I just feel like it's certain things you shouldn't be able to have easy access to. I just feel like I'm not saying you can't work in the medical field, but you don't need to be administering or supervising certain drugs just to me i mean which i get with i mean technically you can overdose a lot but like the drug drugs like were i mean lethal injection these this is literally the drug they use to execute inmates you don't need to be having easy access to that that's just my opinion these are a two two year old and a five year old like Come on, man. We, who, who, child? These, these cases be stressing me out sometimes, especially when it, it did with something like that. Yeah, and it just made it worse, especially when I started researching more on like the process of lethal injection and how it goes. Who? Okay, I'm done, Ren, y'all. Because <laughs> honestly, I'm kind of like at that point, like, wow. When you explain something, it's just like you trying to think why it make like how can, it can make sense or you try to give a person the benefit of the doubt or how they was thinking like i say she probably had mental illness was dealing with a whole bunch of other stuff insecurities okay but man i don't know suicide for one like i say suicide i think it's the most selfish thing but to take it a, even a step farther and then kill your kids i don't feel sorry for her, and i feel like I agree with the prosecutor. I mean, yeah, she may have had mental illness, but that's no excuse. She did a one of the most inhumane crimes. Your children, it's one thing to kill a person, but you kill your own life, like being your child. And what was the point of getting rid of one child, like giving up for adoption, and you keep these children? And I guess I get because you actually bonded with them. But still, a true mother would never do that. But anyway, yeah, so y'all comment y'all's thoughts down below. Like, what y'all think on this case when y'all first read about it, whenever y'all read about it, because I know it's been out. Y'all probably been new about it, but what's y'all's opinions, like, for real? How, what was y'all, like, what was y'all thinking? Do y'all feel like, do y'all feel sorry for her? Do y'all think this is no excuse? Or do you feel like y'all can kind of understand maybe? Because, like I say, I'm not a mother, and I know with post-traumatic, not post-PTSD, well, yeah, with PTSD, and then, um, brain fart, Jesus, what is it? Postpartum depression, Jesus Christ, I cannot think of that for shit. But, yeah, 
postpartum depression. I know that's that is a thing too. So now I'm just thinking like, you know, she already had depression, all these probably different stuff she was dealing with, mental illness, and then on top of that, you know, being abandoned by her, ch her child's fathers. On top of postpartum depression, I, I don't know. Because, I mean, I've heard postpartum depression can make you think some crazy things, make you do some crazy stuff. And like I say, I'm not a mother, so I don't know and I can't say for her. Just like I say, with any mental illness just does everybody different. However, like I say too, mm -mm, like there's still no excuse in my opinion. But yeah, like y'all comment down below. I mean, would y'all give her the benefit of the doubt? All right, yeah, I'm um done moisturizing my hair. I just decided to do my hair in this cute little style just to show you guys. But yeah, that's pretty much all for this video, you guys. Please make sure to like this video, comment, and subscribe to my channel if you like the content that I am throwing out. But that is all for today's video. Y'all, please make sure to stay safe, and I will see y'all in my next upload.